camera shade. Love it or hate it, it is a constant, wonderful world of filmmaking. Whether something as subtle as a handheld camera, an effective story-driven element, like fucking khakis, or a nausea-inducing found footage effect made popular by a go-nowhere group of hacks vainly attempting to hide their complete and utter lack of talent. Either way, if you're in this game long enough, sooner or later, you're going to need a storyboard and shaky camera sequence. So, the question becomes, how are you going to do that? Is there an industry standard method for communicating that a certain shot is either handheld or that the camera is meant to be shaky? Short answer is, not entirely certain. Before posting this video, I did a quick Google search to see if I could find an answer to that question. And pretty much came up empty. Clearly, more research was going to be required. So, I rummaged around through a few of my art and filmmaking books. And although, yeah, I did find a few examples, in my opinion, they are vastly inferior to the method which I made up myself. And so, without any further preamble, I present to you, young grasshopper, the Ink and Grow Rich method, soon to become industry standard, for storyboarding a camera shake. Okay. What you're looking at here are four frames from a points bet commercial that I drew earlier this month. In the opening scene, we've got four astronauts about to be launched into space. The first establishing shot is fine as is, but the remaining shots will only need to have a camera shake effect added to them. If you look at my layers palette, you'll find that the first layer is for my frames, the second one is for my highlights, the third is for my grayscale, and the fourth is the line art. We're not gonna be screwing around with the grayscales or the whites, so we can come on over here and lock those layers. In fact, we can go ahead and lock the frame layers as well. With that out of the way, our first step is to create a new layer, and let's call that Frames 02. Grab the Marquee tool and draw a selection around the frame. Then we're going to go into the Edit pull-down menu and stroke the selection using three pixels should do it. Okay, now deselect and hit Ctrl J to copy that layer, and let's name that one Frames 3. So now we're gonna grab the Frames 02 layer. We're gonna randomly offset it just a bit. All right, then we're gonna grab the Frames 3 layer. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna offset it a bit, but obviously different than Frame 2. You know, I think I'm also going to resize it slightly because we want all three of these frames to be clearly visible. There we go, that's starting to look pretty good. Let's grab the first one and we're gonna rotate it as well. Then we'll do the same with the frame three layer. We'll rotate it, but you know, maybe in the opposite direction. Not too much, just a subtle little tilt. Okay, so already it kind of looks like the frame is bouncing around a bit. I mean, this alone is already beginning to convey the hectic nature of the shot, but it's also beginning to look a bit confusing. So what we're going to do next is drop the opacity for frames two layer down to roughly 60%. Then drop the layer three opacity down to about 30%. Actually, you know what, now that I look at it, let's make that 75% and 50%. There we go, that, that feels about right. Now let's clean things up a bit by hitting Control E and combining those last two layers. Next, I'm going to repeat that entire process. Now, yes, technically, you could get away with simply duplicating that last layer three more times and using those for the remaining shots. But just to try and keep things a little organic looking, I'm going to redo it at least one more time. Great. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of motion blur to these frames just to really emphasize that things are beginning to get crazy in that cockpit. Okay, moving right along, now I am going to grab that blurred frames layer we just created, duplicate it three more times, and then place one around each of the remaining frames. Okay, so now all five of these frames are looking pretty herky-jerky, which is the order of the day. Now, let's see what we can do to bump the intensity up a notch or two. First, let's grab the line art layer, copy and paste. Then we'll select the first two frames, which are fine as is, and delete the line art. Okay, so now we've got the line art duplicated for the last four frames, which are the ones we're going to intensify. Before we do, let's duplicate that layer one more time. And finally, let's shut the visibility off for the grayscale layer, just so we can focus on what we're doing. Which is, essentially exactly what we've done previously with the frames layers. We're going to offset each of the line art layers, just so there's a bit of instability to the images. Drop the opacity of that layer down to 50%. Next, we're gonna select the layer above that, 
offset it slightly in a different direction, and then drop the opacity of that layer down to 25%. Okay, so if we pull back a bit, the first thing that's gonna run through your head is, wow, that is looking very messy. And you'd be correct. So what we're gonna do next is grab the eraser, make sure it's set to round, soft, and with the opacity set somewhere around 30%, and then we're going to get to work cleaning things up a bit. Specifically, I'm going to erase all of the messiness in and around the faces of each character, and I'm doing this on both of the offset layers. We want to keep the chaotic lines around the contour, but be able to read the expressions on their faces. Now, you'll notice that I'm not entirely erasing the duplicate lines in their faces, just enough so it's not so hard on the eyes. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. So next, I'm going to merge these two offset layers. And then finally, I'll add just a tiny bit of motion blur. The direction kind of almost doesn't even matter, just whatever looks good to you. All right, now we'll pop the grayscale layer back on and boom, there it is, that's it. The Ink and Grow Rich method of adding a camera shake to your storyboard. Until next time, this is Vinny Delay with Ink and Grow Rich.